Hi, thank you for tuning in to our podcast. Today's guest is Rob Hill. He's our emergency management director, along with uh, my co-host, Melissa Reams, our deputy Hi, city manager. And Michelle Charles is our producer. And who you don't see is Eric Moreau, and he's our videographer. He's behind the camera. <laughs> thank you for joining us today. We want to talk to you about all things emergency management, but right now, especially storm preparedness. So what are some tips that you would advise our community to be prepared? So the first thing that we like to recommend is that everybody has multiple ways to receive notifications about impending severe weather, whether it's an app, whether you watch the news to see what the weather forecast is, um, whether you read your information, um, or simply just have a NOAA weather radio in your house or your business that lets you know um, of a threat. Um, that's that's the first thing. And then the second thing is to have a plan, have a plan in place for work, for home, and when you're outdoors. So if you are out participating in outdoor activities, what you're going to do and where you're going to go if you have um, severe weather come into the area. Well, and we just got, I'm sorry, we just got mm-hmm. new um, alarms set, th- sirens throughout the community. We did. Outdoor uh, warning sirens. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about those and the benefit of the new system? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the old system um, was about 30 years old and we wanted to um, update the sirens. And one of the things that we looked at, because we're always trying to be conscientious about how much money we spend and and, um, where we're putting our our, uh, efforts. And one of the things that we did was we put all of the talking storm sirens in the highly outdoor populated Mm -hmm. areas, right? So they make announcements. So they don't just activate. They tell you that they're going to sound. And in the uh, residential areas, business districts, and um, areas like that, we have rotating mechanical sirens that are much louder. We were able to go from 56 sites to 36 sites Mm -hmm. with the new system, and it's a lot more manageable for us Mm -hmm. and still have the same coverage. Actually, we actually gained more coverage because now we have Lake McMurtry covered as well. That's what I thought. So Mm -hmm. we actually have more of the highly populated areas Mm -hmm. with recreation uh, and that kind of thing included. Yeah. Yeah. So when the storm sirens go off, here's a here's kind of a little misnomer. Um, different people have different ideas about what it means. Some mm-hmm. people think that it's going off to tell us, hey, um, there's a potential, right? Um, but when we activate storm sirens, it's a warning. We want people to take cover. You have very limited amount of time. Um, usually somewhere between five and 15 minutes to get to cover um, should the sirens activate. Um, now think about, let's, let's think about this for a minute. So you're at Boomer Lake, you're walking the lake, and you know it's lightning and you know that there's, it's thundering in the distance. Mm-hmm. And the siren um, starts up and it how it will activate it is it will give you like a courtesy tone. It just kind of okay. ding, okay. ding, ding. And it says stand by for tornado warning. And then it will announce and activate and let you know that there is a threat. You've got somewhere between 5 and 15 minutes to get to cover. That's why we're saying you need a plan. You need to have a plan in place. And Eric, can you put an Mm -hmm. example of that at the end of this video for our viewers to hear? I think that will be helpful because we do have that recorded that you... We have one of them recorded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll have that at the end. So... Rob, do we mm-hmm. have any public storm shelters anymore? If I'm at Boomer Lake, where am I going? Getting in my car and trying to get back home? Yes. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So um, the ditch. The ditch. The ditch. Well, <laughs> yeah. We, they don't even recommend that anymore, believe it or not. It's it's so dangerous. But um, so, um, and while she brought that up, um, that is um, something very good, right? We don't want to go to a ditch. And we definitely do not want to go to an underpass or an overpass, yeah, right? Because I've heard that's right. not you know, safe. And we can talk about why we don't do those. Um, but um, there are no public storm shelters in the city of Stillwater. Even at OSU, there's none? So the city of Stillwater, or uh, OSU does have storm shelters, but they're for students, students. faculty, and staff. Okay. So um, the locations that they have are designed to hold the people that are supposed to be going there, right, not right. the community. Right. Now, let's touch very briefly about why we don't have public storm shelters. If we built public storm shelters, we would have to build public storm shelters for everybody. That's right. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely everybody, right? Mm-hmm. We can say, oh, the, these people want to go to a st- short storm shelter and these people don't. We would we still have to build it for everybody. Right. For more than 50,000 people. Yeah, yeah, for more than 50,000 right. people. There are FEMA requirements. You know, they have yes. to have five square feet of space. But it's it's more than just that. Think about all the people that would try to leave their homes. Right. Get in their vehicles at the last minute. Right. Try to right. get there. Try to find a parking spot. Try to get inside. Now, once you're inside, do we have a whole nother dynamic? Right. And then you we, bring your pet. And Well, you we have pets. <laughs> so many pets. People <laughs> want to bring pets, right? Their fur babies or yeah. or, their, right. or their snakes or their oh, ferrets or their guinea pigs or whatever it may be, right? People yeah. want to bring those. All the things. So we would have mm-hmm. to have pet acceptable yes. shelters. We would have to have non-pet shelters. Mm-hmm. We'd have to have all of them would have to be ADA acceptable. Right. Um, but then it goes Good even points. more than that. Who manages that? Who cleans that? Who is security while they're there? There. Because sometimes we have um, people that are separated that go to a shelter and there could be a possible domestic. Mm -hmm. You could have somebody that's Mm -hmm. going through a bad, bad situation Mm -hmm. and um, they get there and maybe it's a disagreement over child custody. Well, Mm -hmm. guys, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, No one wants that job of turning someone away. Absolutely. Uh, So you get a capacity at this shelter and then you're trying to send overflow. You get yourself into so many different issues. And if you're waiting until that uh, minute to take cover, you're in a bad position. Uh, As you mentioned, Rob, just the the parking alone. Mm -hmm. I have been in a tornado uh, and a situation where just in the parking lot, you are debris is flying and hitting. Yeah, so right. it yeah. is a bad place to be. It is. It so, is. so maybe we should talk about where people should take shelter. Yeah, let's, where let's do you let's take shelter in you your do. home? Yeah. Exactly. Where do you go? What are the safe places to go so, to? So yeah. obviously if you listen to um, the media, they'll tell you below ground, right? Right. Yeah. Well, they obviously, say safest, right? Obviously, right. Below ground. So storm shelter, mm-hmm. yeah. safe room, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even retrofitted, whether it was built in, the house to begin with, or if it was retrofitted, right. those are those are the best. Right. But let's think about this lo- uh, logistically, right? Um, people have been surviving tornadoes in houses, inside, yeah. in the bathroom, in the lowest level, most interior of their mm-hmm. homes for the most amount of years, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. People in Moore, Oklahoma, survived EF five tornadoes yes. in their bathroom, covered up, wearing um, bicycle helmets. With pillows and mattresses and everything else yes, on we themselves, did. yeah. Yes. So, so <laughs> I was there. Lowest level, most interior. Uh. Now, one of the things that I've seen recently that I really, really like because one of the things that we have in this community that is not well addressed is we have a lot of apartment complexes. That's right. Yes, and those apartment complexes have a lot of people and. A lot they, of our students. I'm so do. glad yeah. you're addressing. Yeah. That. So, yeah. so what happens is, <clears throat> it, it's a tiered approach, right? Mm-hmm. So we say. If you live in an apartment complex and you know the weather's going to get bad and you can safely go to somebody house, somebody mm-hmm. else's house, a mm-hmm. friend, a relative, somebody that has yeah. a more sturdy structure, right. we recommend that. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you don't have that, the next best step is if you live on an elevated floor, make, make neighbors or make friends with the neighbors yes. below on the lowest yeah, level, right? right? Okay, so a lot of people have issue with that, right? They have anxieties about going to somebody that they don't really know right. and saying, hey, if the weather's bad, can I come in? Right. They, so we get that. So what we were told was basically the same as a house. Mm-hmm. Most interior, put the most walls between you and the yeah. exterior and, and take shelter mm-hmm, in right. your home. So in your apartment. So if it's a bathroom, if it's a closet, if it's... Um, a bedroom mm-hmm. closet or something like that um, to, to go there. Yeah. So those are the options that we recommend in that order. Leave, go to, mm-hmm. just like a, just like a mobile home, mm-hmm. leave, but right. leave in plenty enough time to get somewhere mm-hmm. safe. Yeah. Um, if you um, can make neighbors or make friends with the neighbors below, mm-hmm. do it. If yeah. not most interior. Um, so put them as many walls between you and the, and the outside, right? Yeah. Well, and I would say also, I mean, it's it's kind of the neighborly thing if you have a storm shelter to let people know that you have one if you have space for other people. Mm-hmm. We have a small basement in our house 
And we have some college students who rent the house across the street from us. When they moved in, I walked over there and I said, do you have a storm shelter? I mean, because I'm that lady in the neighborhood, right? Well, and do you know, like so many of our, our students come from back east or right. from overseas. And I'll say, do you know what to do during tornado weather? Exactly. Right. And, and I'm right there with you, Michelle. Yeah. Um, Chris and I have one of those built in the garage mm -hmm. and it, it seats eight people. So we go. would be gathering up our neighbors if they yep. needed to come. Yep. Exactly. I told them we have a basement. We have a storm shelter. If I'm at work and the tornado yep. sirens are going off, call me. I will text you the door code. Yeah. yeah. And you yeah. can get in there. Yeah. So we you know. believe it or not, we have um, close to 800 registered, close to 800 registered storm shelters um, mm -hmm. in our system. And almost every one of those that is registered says, oh, my neighbor comes over in the notes section. They'll yes. say, oh, my neighbor comes over. So um, so we know that they either have family, friends or neighbors that are coming. That's over a great and, point too. staying in their shelter is make sure that your storm shelter is registered. Yep. Yes, because that exactly. is how we are able to know where to go and make sure that everyone is OK. That's and right. that was another yeah. thing we learned from more. Um, with that EFI that you mentioned mm -hmm. was the registered shelters. Which one? One, no, two, or three? The, the most <laughs> right. latest and greatest. Yeah. Oh, so, or, goodness. or call a relative and say, That's the right. weather's bad, I'm going to my storm so right. shelter. So you bring up an awesome point, yes. right? So in your planning for this, if you can take and share your plan mm -hmm. with somebody else in the same community, Good point. That, is, that is highly encouraged. If you can't, um, if you don't have somebody here, share it with somebody in another community, mm -hmm. just so long as somebody has your information and knows where you're at, um, will help when first responders come. So if here's, here's an example, I'm going to my shelter. So I call my sister. Mm -hmm. There's another community say, Hey, I'm going to my storm shelter. There's a tornado coming. Right. If you don't hear from me in an hour, call. Mm -hmm. And then they call. And then what happens is they, she can call the local authorities. We have it registered. We know where the shelter is at in the house. We know where it's supposed to be. So let's say, let's say you had damage or let's say you got in there and the door got jammed. Uh, and yes. you can't or get out. The car landed on you. Or the I mean, car, that's or the my car. worry with that. Yeah. Well, but so, it's true. Yeah. yeah. So, so that way you call the authorities. We go by and we can check and we can make sure and we know where that's at because it's already registered. Well, and all of this speaks to the importance of being prepared ahead of time. So it, we know that this is not a uh, fun to talk about or to endure, uh, but we live in Oklahoma. We know the mm -hmm. potential for bad weather and it is all being prepared mm -hmm. and it is right. having that plan because whether it is actually a tornado or not, or just extremely high winds or whatever the, the severe weather may be, uh, you're not always guaranteed cell phone reception after the storm has hit. Exactly. And so therefore that adds to the panic and the worry versus be prepared ahead of time. Make sure you share your plan. You have that open mm -hmm. conversation uh, with another trusted individual. And um, then we can do what we need to after the storm hits to uh, make sure everyone's safe and clean up. Rob, can we go out to the, uh, uh, stillwater.org website. Can you register your shelter online? Absolutely. Yeah. Go to stillwater.org no forward, for it, forward right? slash, right. There's no fee. Free. Um, stillwater.org forward slash EM is an emergency management. And one of the options is to register, register your storm shelter and go on. It's very simple. Um, you type in your address, the map should take you to the location. Um, and you can be as specific with the map as taking the mouse, placing the cursor over the exact portion of your house where your shelter's at. That. Click awesome. it. Yes. Good. Click it. Yes. Put in some information, <laughs> some phone numbers and location in the house. If you've got some notes, um, you can do that as well. Yeah. Perfect. So if I live not in the corporate city limits, do I register my storm shelter with the sheriff's department, or do I still register it through stillwater.org? So you can register it with uh, stillwater.org because we share the information, but you can also register it with Payne County Emergency Management. Payne County Emergency Management. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay, so let's switch lanes real quick because yeah. we are running out of time and there's so what? much to talk about. We just got started. Yeah. What are you talking about? I know, I know. I know. <laughs> okay, so possible severe storms, yes. follow emergency management on Facebook, please. Uh, yes. The latest and greatest updates, we cover those immediately as they're going. Rob and his team do such a great job. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about, if you don't mind, some of the things we've been dealing with right now with the high winds and the fire. Mm -hmm. What are some things that we can do um, if we are caught in a situation like that and to be prepared? 
Yeah, so <clears throat> fire is um, one of those unique um, monsters, right? It happens every spring. It happens every fall. Mm -hmm. um, it happens when we have a lot of dormant grasses around um, and the atmosphere starts to warm up and people are more outdoors burning, burning brush piles, burning trash and so forth. So um, we tend to, we, we watch the weather every single day and we post to our social media site, like you referenced, mm -hmm. and we let you know if it's a fire danger day, it's a red flag warning day. Mm -hmm. If there's a burn ban in place, we let you know that. So you can decide, should I burn today or should I not? Um, so Obviously, there are good days to burn and bad days to not. But if you get caught in a situation where there is a fire, um, obviously, if you can get away from it, that's the best. Mm -hmm. um, second thing is if you can um, get inside a, a, a structure to get away from the heat and the flames and call 911, we want you to do that as well. That way we can get first responders on scene and, and get you help and get you evacuated. Um, you know, fire is, fire is so so difficult because when we have those big high fire danger days, it's usually associated with low relative humidity and it's associated with the high winds. Right. And so just being aware, having your head on a swivel, watching outside, do you smell smoke? If you smell smoke, can you see smoke? If you can see it and you can smell it, did you call 911 and there's let people fire. know? There's right. a fire, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So a um, little bit of elementary school coming out there. If you can right. see it. You can smell it. Yeah. Right. So um, we encourage people to call and call often. But also at the same time, if you're going to call, stay where you can give updated information. Don't right. just call and say, hey, I, I see smoke. I see this. I see that. And then hang up with the dispatcher, right? That doesn't help. Help, help us. Lead us in. Let us know where you're at. Let us know the direction you're looking. Um, but fire is unique. So fire usually is the opposite of severe weather. We tell you shelter in place in severe weather. But in fire, we want you to evacuate the area. Um, yes. In both cases, um, and we didn't talk about this very much, but in both cases require you to have a go bag. Okay. In your go bag, oh, you're going to need change yeah. clothes, you're going to need medication, you're going to need copies of paperwork. Mm -hmm. um, people that lost their houses last week in the fire, yes. they don't have the paperwork if they didn't take it with them. So how do they access funds at the bank? How do they prove that they had insurance? How do they, how do they prove that this is their vehicle, that they lived here? Mm -hmm. So all those things are necessary. In a storm shelter situation, we, we tell you that you put the change of clothes in your storm shelter because if you are impacted by a tornado, mm -hmm. usually when you go in, it's warm, it's hot, it's humid, it's right. and it's and it's getting ready to rain and stuff. When you come out, it's usually cold. There's usually debris everywhere. That's so right. if you go inside wearing cut off jeans and flip flops and a and a wife beater this shirt, is so true. Yeah, <laughs> wear a wife beater, and yeah. when you come out. You wish you had boots, long yes, pants, a long sleeve shirt, a hat, and yeah. something else, and maybe even some yep. gloves because the situation has changed drastically. So um, when you think preparedness, we want you to think in totality. All the threats, all the disasters that can occur around you, we want you to think about those things so that you can be prepared, whether you have to grab and go or whether you have to grab and stay. That's what we want you to think about. So can you can you scan and upload documents to the cloud and mm -hmm. then, Absolutely and then you, can. you as have it you, in your hand? As long yep. as you have mm -hmm. access to your passwords that get you into the cloud later. <laughs> right. That's why you have a password that's unique to yourself. And so not so just remember. password. It can't just be password. Yeah. No, no learn that. that. Not that. So, so another, another thing that we recommend is that you keep some type of a... Um, power supply to charge your phone. Mm -hmm. So when oh, you like go to your power bank. when you when yeah. you go to your yeah. when you yeah. go to your safe place, you plug it in immediately so you start charging. So when you come out, right. if there is no power, you have the ability to make phone calls. You have the ability to let people know that right. you're okay. You have the ability to start the process of the recovery. And that's providing that the towers didn't get blown down, right? That's true. So but yeah, maybe you, you might can, not have service. Can you text even if just depends on if you it, have not service. necessarily that's if right. those See, towers are down, it yeah. yeah. But yeah. but you will get there. You, yeah. you will get oh, yeah. there. Uh, there is cleanup and, and, and healing after the storm, I promise. But we have to be prepared. And that will, if the more we are prepared before a storm, the easier, I promise, it most likely is. And the biggest thing with community preparedness is yes. it starts with you, yes, your neighbor, your neighborhood, your area of the town, 
in town itself. And I think that's what these two ladies are both doing is right. being that in their neighborhoods. Yeah. Yep. Is yeah. working mm -hmm. with their. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why well, neighbor. That's right. Well, Rob, thank you for joining us today. As always, yeah. he is a wealth of information. Yes. His team, they are truly phenomenal. And uh, his team is predominantly volunteers, guys. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but please follow them on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. But the Facebook definitely right. gets that updates, yeah. especially when there's a storm going and uh, we're down there watching. And all working that. with you, it's live updates. It so is. if you check to get notifications, every time she posts, you get the new notification. And, and Rob and I, we, we will make that initial post on Facebook and then everything concerning that storm will be updated that on thread. that same feed, that same yeah. thread. So. Well, and yes, Rob, don't you have a, a relationship with Team Radio where they also broadcast from the EOC? We do, yes. So when we have high, um, moderate to high-end events, um, yeah. our partners from Team Radio will come over into our emergency operations center. Mm -hmm. And then as information comes out from our office, the information that Don puts out, they turn around and they just read right back over Team Radio. So if we do have an event that occurs, um, Team Radio will be there with us broadcasting on their channels, their five channels, and they will be telling you what we need you to do as a result of that event and where you can go for services and help and and uh, where first responders are going and so forth. And so. they are great. They sit there and work right there with us. Um, but many thanks to Rob Hill, again, yep, for everything that he does with his team and volunteers and mm -hmm. uh, for joining us today. So, and thank you, ladies. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And Eric, behind the camera. Thank and you, And thank Eric. you all for joining us. Together, we are investing in municipal excellence. Take care. Bye.